Hey everybody, how's it going today? I hope you're doing well. And in this particular video, we're going to be covering simple linear regression in Python. So this is an implementation from scratch, not entirely from scratch, we're going to be using libraries, but a lot more from scratch than the three lines of code that you can if you import it from scikit-learn. And actually, we're going to see how to do that. Uh, a good way to show what we're actually implementing is by showing the, the final product that uh, other people have made, which is how you'd actually use this thing. But it is very important to actually be able to to construct it ourselves so that we understand the machine learning uh, topic as well as the Python code to actually do so and its associated libraries. So I do assume you know pretty much nothing, okay? Not that I'm assuming you know nothing. I'm saying you don't need to know much of anything for this. Uh, a little bit of Python code might not hurt, um, but we're going to be using uh, base Python code with NumPy, Pandas, just a little bit, uh, and it won't be super complicated. I'm going to explain all the ideas from start to finish, uh, maybe not include every single possible topic of linear regression. Uh, there's particularly there's this idea of like R squared, which we're not going to look at because I don't think it's too important for the machine learning point of view. Um, so yeah, this is from a machine learning point of view for sure, rather than a, a hardcore statistics point of view. I've seen both and I, I prefer and I would rather show the machine learning point of view. Okay, so let's get started. And yeah, make sure you subscribe if you're not already. So uh, first, what I'm going to show is scikit-learns, it's just a library, uh, how we actually use this, this main idea of linear regression, what it's doing, uh, and how we would do it. So to do this, we're going to import a couple libraries, we'll import numpy as np, we will import pandas as pd, and I just said we'll use scikit-learn, we're not quite ready for that, we're going to be getting the data set right now which is going to be, for our purposes, we'll choose this California housing training data set in here. Okay, so we'll do, uh, we'll just call it df for data frame, we'll see why shortly, is equal to pd.readcsv of sample data slash California, California housing train.csv. And we can show the data with df. Okay, so this is our data frame, which just means a table, really, we have it in this object. And we have 17,000 rows, where each of those rows is basically a location in California. And its, uh, its columns are, you know, different attributes about that. So its location is given by its longitude and its latitude. Uh, the median age of all the houses in that location is, uh, say, 15 for this one. And the total rooms in that area is 7,650 and so on. Okay, so for our lesson, we're not going to be using all of this data. Uh, we're going to be using a couple of them. Right now, we're going to look at uh, total bedrooms versus the population. So total bedrooms and the population. So to do some graphs involving that, uh, just to plot the data, we can do import matplotlib.pyplot as plt. And then we'll get the population, which is equal to df sub population. So this is just referencing, basically grabbing this, this column and putting that in a variable. We can get bedrooms. Bedrooms is equal to df sub total bedrooms, total bedrooms. And now we have those two variables, okay? So we can do a plt.scatter of pop and bedrooms. And a scatter plot is where we're going to put it basically on two axes, so x and y axes, uh, where x is generally the input and y is generally the output. Uh, we're going to be plotting this data. Okay, so we can get an x label and a y label just so that this renders a little pretty. Uh, to label the x axis, it's going to be population. And on the y axis, plt.y label, we will label that as total bedrooms. And we're going to be making a regression model that. Uh, I can show you right now, basically tries to draw a line through this data right here. So it's a linear regression, meaning that we're drawing a line, we're not drawing some sort of squiggly thing, and it looks like it's fairly linear anyway, the pattern goes up like this. So we're happy with the linear regression. And the, the point of the linear regression is that given, given some population value, we can predict some associated uh, total bedrooms value by just asking, hey, what is the, what is the function equal at this point? Or our function is just the line. So really what a line is, is it's uh, some y-intercept, which means where it intersects, uh, intersects this axis here. Basically, it acts as a lift point. So to, to make a line, we can both lift it up and down, and we can change its slope. 
So right here, we'd start at about here, and then we would we would get a slope that goes about that. That's the line that we want. And we can do that linear regression so that in the future, when we had other sorts of variables, or not other sorts of variables, the same variables, uh, if we had other populations, we would be able to predict total bedrooms uh, based off of that population in the future. Okay, it's a useful model for us. So, uh, what we're going to do now is just show scikit-learn's linear regression. We're going to plot that on right like this. So we'll convert these uh, series objects, that's actually what they're called, they're really just columns of, of the data frame. We'll convert those to NumPy arrays, and we'll, she we'll see a quick property of those. Pop np is equal to pop dot to NumPy, and we can do bedrooms NumPy is equal to bedrooms dot to numpy so just converting those two and these have a shape attribute so pop and p dot shape and bedrooms and p dot shape we can see they're both 17,000 comma 17,000 comma so that is and that is each of their shapes it just means they have 17,000 rows and there's no other sorts of uh, no other variables really Okay, so what we can do is make a linear regression model. We can do from sklearn.linear model, import linear regression, and I like to write it as, as LR, except Google Colab doesn't like that, so I'm going to give up pretty soon. Please just let me do it. No, okay, no, sure, I'll, I'll give up on that. <laughs> Very annoying. Um, so sklearn uh, model is equal to, uh, I, I typed LR over here, but linear regression, of dot fit okay so we just pass it like that bracket bracket dot fit and this is training the model okay so it's saying uh fit basically says okay give me the data give me this x these x and the y's and i will be able to tell you the line that you want to be able to give you these uh, under the hood these two values this lift and this slope value uh, that fits the data well so we'll fit it, and it turns out we have to give something that's not quite expected. We actually have to do a reshape on this population. So we're feeding it, we're basically just feeding it the population, which is the input, except we'll reshape this by 17,000, which is what it is over here, except then by one, which basically tells it that we have uh, just one column of data. And later we'll see that we can add uh, multiple columns of, uh, of data. Okay, so we give it that, and it's happy, happy as is with just bedrooms, uh, bedrooms numpy and that is a model okay so surprisingly that is all that's all you need to do to make the scikit-learn model so sklearn bedroom predictions this is getting the predictions uh, corresponding to all these inputs so forget for a second that we're plotting both the x and the y's we have a list of just the x values let's plot the line that we'd say for each of those x values let's plot the point that we'd expect the the inputs uh, or the output for the inputs to have. Okay, so sklearn bedroom predictions is equal to sklearn uh, model dot predict. So we're saying dot predict. I have to give it again the same type of format here, which is kind of annoying. But we're giving it the inputs, and that's all you have to give it. So this returned associated expected outputs, and we should see that it has a shape a shape of 17,000 values here. Okay, so now we can plot uh, plot everything again. It's basically we can just grab the same code here. And if you wanted, you could probably turn it into turn it into a function, but I'm going to pass on that for now. And so all the same thing, which does this as we saw, except then at the bottom, I can do plt dot scatter, I can do a scatter plot of pop and not just bedrooms. But what did we just create? We created sklearn bedroom predictions. So if we plot our predictions, we can see here, for all of these associated inputs, it predicted that these were the outputs, and we can see it draws a line, okay? It draws a line because it's a linear model. All right, so I'm just going to do one more thing before we actually start to implement this idea from scratch. I'm going to make a data frame that, uh, that shows a couple different things. So I'm going to do predictions df is equal to pd.dataframe. Data frame. These things take dictionaries. Basically, each key is associated. Uh, each key is, is a column name, and the the associated value is actually just a list of values that um, that that are the values that you want for that column. So we're gonna do. We're gonna get uh, population. Population is just pop. Should be fine. We'll do bedrooms. 
and this is really just for displaying things. Bedrooms is for bedrooms. There's bedrooms. And sklearn, we'll type sklearn bedroom predictions because we're going to add to this at the end of the video with the linear model that we made from scratch. All the stuff uh, under the hood here, this is just calling dot fit. We want to do all of that from scratch. So this is just for now what we're out, or we're printing is what sklearn's uh, model did for us. sklearn bedroom predictions is what we saw. Um, it's going to be sklearn bedroom predictions. And if that cut off, I don't know, but I, I think you should be able to see that. Yes, you can. Okay, so we got that. And then I will just output uh, predictions. DF is right there. Okay, so these are all, and you can see it seems a little bit off here. Uh, but in general, it will actually, we can see here that, you know, it fits the trend quite well. It's actually a pretty good model. There's just a, a lot of variance around this line, a lot of errors. And we'll talk about that very shortly. So, uh, yeah, that's the idea. And now that we know what we're trying to do, we're trying to make uh, the same kind of object here. We're trying to make our own kind of uh, API, if you will, interface, so that we can make a linear regression model that actually we know how to fit the model. We know what's going on underneath. And what's on, on underneath is this linear model, which is defined by, we're going to assume, and I'm going to write this down for us. Actually, I'm just going to copy this because it's easier. We're going, to, we're basically assuming right now that total bedroom sub i, which is just, you know, the ith total bedrooms value, that's equal to alpha, some value, which is that, that lift here. Okay, you can lift a line like this and you can slope it however you want. So that's some, some lift value plus the slope times, which I'm going to call beta, times the population value that's according to that. So this i here is just showing that it's the total bedrooms i is associated with this, this population time, times beta plus alpha. And then we can see it's also an error. So here we can see very clearly if it, there wasn't an error, then it would just be on this true line here. But there's an error. So it's a linear model. It's a, it's the associated output is linear with the input, except there's going to be error up and down bouncing around the line. Okay, and uh, if you were taking a statistics course, they'd tell you about how that's a normally distributed error with uh, an ex expectation of zero and a variance of sigma squared, blah, blah, blah. Basically, for this, we're just going to assume it's an error. We're just going to call it, call it an error. Okay, so now, more generally, this is what the particular pattern was, except a linear regression model, what I, Scikit learns was, you know, we just happen to feed it these arbitrary values that we know associated with the idea of bedrooms and, and population. The, the population is the input, and the bedrooms is the output. But uh, more generally, we generally think of the input as x and the output as y, and so generally, yi is alpha plus beta times xi plus the error is the idea. Okay, so now we're going to, uh, I'm just going to copy in here, not the function itself, but the, the function definition and the comment for it. So we're going to make get predictions model and x, where we tr are trying to obtain the predictions for a given model and inputs. Okay, so model, we're going to call it this here, model is alpha hat, uh, which is a number, and beta hat. Okay, so it's a dictionary of these two things where we can extract the, the actual values out of that by referencing the dictionary. Now, what I can copy in here for you is explaining what our model is. So our model, we are actually are getting an alpha hat plus a beta hat. It's the same thing here, except our model is going to make an estimation. Of course, so the y, this is the true y, is actually equal to alpha plus beta times xi plus the error. It's a linear model plus the error. Except the model that we're going to make is this output is equal to some estimation of this value plus the estimation of this value, so alpha hat plus beta hat times xi. All right? So it's not the error. We're not going to, we're not going to be modeling in the error here. We don't know what that is. We're going to assume on average, it's actually zero. So we're not going to worry about it. And uh, this is, this is the model we're trying to get. So when I say model here, I actually really just mean the parameters or the, 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 the values. When I, when we mean machine learning and supervised learning, we just mean learning parameters and the parameters of this model is going to be alpha hat and beta hat. We're trying to learn these things. We can never find the actual true values of alpha and beta. Maybe you can, but you'll, you'll be off by a little bit. So we're going to estimate them. We're going to try and learn these parameters. 
Okay, so when it, if I say parameters, I mean alpha hat and beta hat, and I probably will say that. Okay, so we have model, which is going to look like this, and we have x, which is a numpy array. Think about it pretty much as just a list. It's going to be a list of values. Uh, they're all going to be floats with the shape n comma of the input. So it's just our associated inputs. Uh, we saw that earlier with, uh, basically, it was the population here. It was uh, pop np is actually exactly what it would be. 17,000, that n is 17,000, uh, comma, which don't worry about that. So 17,000 items in a NumPy array. So we can make this function very easily by getting alpha, we'll just we'll actually say alpha hat, is equal to the model sub alpha hat. Okay, and then beta hat is equal to model sub beta hat. And then we'll return alpha hat plus beta hat times x. And so this isn't learning the best parameters right now, which I was talking about. This is just given that you have, given that you had a model already of alpha hat and beta hat, this is the predictions you'd actually return. And so this returns a numpy array of floats with shape n comma, because actually when we input this thing as a, a basically a vector, a bunch of information, if you do this times beta hat, that's going to then produce a vector of all those inputs times the beta hat. And then if you add alpha hat to that, that actually produces a big long vector where each every indistinguished uh, component of that is alpha hat plus beta hat times that particular component. Okay, so that is now a big long list of our predictions that we would get. So let's just test if this works. I'm not going to really uh, bore you with uh, the typing this out. Basically, to test the get predictions here, if we have a test model of alpha hat is 2 and a beta hat is 3. So our lift here, our lift here is just 2 and our slope is some uh, 3 value. We'll see what this it does. If we have an input of numpy array of 1, 4, and 3, so those are our associated inputs, what would our uh, linear model produce, what, what would it produce for 1, 4, and 3, if we pass that as in the model, and then the input. We would say it's not defined, because I need to run it over here, and then we'll see it produces 5, 14, and 11. Now, why does it do that? It does this because alpha hat is 2 and beta hat is 3. 3 times 1 is 3, plus 2 is 5. Done. 3, 3 times 4 is 12, plus 2 is 14. 3 times 3 plus 2 is 11. Okay, 9 plus 2 is 11. All right, so that function works. That assumes that, uh, you know, given that we have this decided upon alpha hat and beta hat, we can produce uh, the predict the associated predictions. Now, this is great, but it is uh, definitely not everything. Uh, soon, actually, I'm just going to show you for now that, that this doesn't work very well. If I paste this same thing in here, it's the exact same uh, the, the exact same thing as up here. And actually, I'll just do that for you so that you can see this. It's, it's, I'm just going to plot the graph again. Plot the graph again with not the SK learn bedroom predictions, which output like that. If we get, um, let's just get some associated predictions with, um, so that would be if I replace this with the get predictions, get predictions of the, I'll say test model, test model, and we'd also have to pass that some inputs, and those inputs would just be the the population, okay? So that would be, actually pop, pop NP is probably, is proper. Okay, so if we pass it in like that, then we can see this orange thing is our linear model here, and this blue thing is our data. So clearly this, this model, uh, the, the linear idea is fine, it's just that the parameters are wrong, the values in here are wrong. So I'm going to try maybe, I don't know, one, and clearly this was wrong. Maybe I'll try one like that. Maybe that's a little better. Okay, that was definitely close. I actually need to go down the slope just a little bit. I'll actually change this to one over two. And now, did I do it? There, that's actually pretty close. Okay, and we could fight with that a little bit more uh, to get values that, that fit the, the data very, very well. Um, but generally we don't do that in practice we don't just look at this uh, eyeball this and then try different values what we do is use um actually there's a few different ways in computers how we do this uh in linear regression it turns out it turns out there's a formula that we can apply um to to find the right parameters that minimize the error 
or that minimize some certain function of the error. So we've been talking a little bit about how, you know, our, our model is wrong. Like it's, it's, it's wrong in all these spots. It's, it's not super close. Um, but we do need to define in particular some specific measurement of error. And so what we're going to return now, and I'm going to, I'm going to again copy in a function, just the definition, and we'll write it soon. We're going to define mean squared error with y and y predictions, which, which returns the mean squared error given the observed, the observed is the blue, the blue y values, and the predicted outputs. So our predicted outputs are here, all of these values, and the uh, the predicted or the observed are these blues. Okay, so we um, we have y as a numpy array of floats of n observed values and y predictions is a numpy array of floats with shape n comma so n values of predicted outputs. So there are two vectors here that we're passing into it, and we're going to compute their mean squared error, which I haven't said yet. But actually, all that it is is that. If we have two, these two vectors of information, basically we can get the mean squared error, which is the saying is the saying the average squared error, where the error is simply okay. For each uh, each points here, these two points, for example, are clearly lined up. We would take the error is the vertical distance, so we're off. We're trying to model this variable, so we're off by this subtract that or this subtract that. That would make a different sign, either negative or positive. But if we square that. If we square that, that'll be positive, because if you square anything, you multiply it by itself, that's always going to be positive. So if we do this, where we take the difference between these two points vertically, and then we square that value, and then we sum that to the same thing across all other points. So we do the same thing over here, we take the distance here, we square it, we take the distance here, square it, distance here, square it, we have a bunch of squared errors. And then we can sum across all of those to get a big positive value. And then we can get the average of that. So that's why it's mean squared error, or that just means you divide by the number or you sum up all the values and then you divide by the number that we have. That's what an average is or mean. Uh, you get the mean squared error. So we can, we can get this uh, pretty easily by doing the following. We're going to return the numpy.sum and so this is this is summing over square distances. So to get square distances, we'll do the numpy dot square of y minus y predictions. Okay. So here is a vec. This returns a vector, or a, a bunch of them. A vec uh, not a bunch of vectors, but uh, you know a bunch of values where they are the difference between them, the errors. And then we square those values, and then we sum them up, and then we divide by n to get the mean squared error. We can do something very similar, not next. I don't know why he's suggesting I do that. <laughs> okay, so then we can actually get uh, something that might be a little more interpretable to us. So this is a function uh, that, you know, under the hood, uh, we're actually going to minimize this particular error. We're going to try and minimize the mean squared error. But something that might be more interpretable to us is going to be this function which is called the mean absolute error. So that's just the same thing. Sorry, that, that looks a little bit confusing right now. But all it is, this is the mean squared error, the average of the squared errors. And this is the mean absolute error, the average of the absolute errors, where this can say on average, this tells us on average, uh, how, how wrong are we in either direction? How much error do we have in either direction, positive or negative, because it's going to be absolute. And so we'd actually, we'd actually just return return, where is it? The numpy, numpy dot sum of the numpy dot abs. So instead of squaring it, we take the absolute value and then divide sum all of that and then divide by n. So that if we were to test these things, we can test this with, we'll say MSE one is equal to the mean squared error of, okay, uh, the get predictions. So get our predictions uh, with the test model and the population, population numpy, and then bedrooms. Okay, so what is this? Bedrooms is our actual output, and get predictions with the population is this is what this is what our model expects uh, the the predictions or the actual number of bedrooms to be. So this is MSE one. I'm just putting an M a one on it. MSE one is this is not defined and it's not defined. Yes, sorry. So I said n. That's the number of uh, number of components we have. We actually need to get uh, very similarly. 
or for both, you just need to get n is equal to the length of y, which better be equal to the length of the predictions, uh, y predictions, by the way, these two better be the same, the same number of things. No, I don't want to yield length of y. Okay, and I will do the same down here. Sorry about that error. And now we can get MSE is this value, okay, uh, clearly quite a bit of error, but this, remember what this is, this means on average, the squared distance is 111,000. It's kind of hard to interpret, isn't it? I don't really like it either. And so what we'll do is MAE, mean absolute error, one, is equal to the mean absolute error of the get predictions. I'm just going to copy it, it's going to be the same thing. The get predictions with our model and the population, so giving that input. So what do we think our output, our corresponding outputs are? Let's compare that to bedrooms and get the mean absolute error, which is MAE1 is 213. So this means on average, our linear model is off by 213 in either direction. Here, 213. And if that's predicting total bedrooms, that's pretty good. Like that's actually, that's actually quite good. We're only giving it the population value and it knows it can be off on average by about 213, which is very, very good actually. Okay. Hi, sorry for the jump there. I actually just came back from the eye doctor. If my eyes, uh, my pupils will go a little bit bigger. That's why. So uh, with the eye doctor, they, uh, they gave me this formula. The eye doctor said that beta hat is equal to this and alpha hat is equal to this. So basically, uh, now what we want to do is get the uh, the model that best minimizes the least squares. So the, the MSE, the mean squared error, this one. So it turns out that these parameters here, these, these formulas are the ones that do that. Okay, there's a big explanation as to why. Uh, if you want to go read about that, look up uh, linear regression parameter estimation, maximum likelihood, these uh, these terms, and you'll get a good answer. So basically, the important part for us is that these parameters minimize uh, this this function. Okay, so they they give you the line they give you the line that's going to fit it very well according to this this uh, measure of error. So basically, uh, we're trying to get this function to find get best model, which we give it x those list of x's and the y the list of y's specifically the numpy arrays of those. Uh, and it's going to return the model with the parameters that minimize the MSE. Now it turns out I can just kind of sh walk through with you how to actually uh, interpret these and calculate the, the parameters here. So we can get X bar is equal to simply the NP dot average of uh, the X's. Okay, so X and Y bar is equal to the NumPy dot average of the Y's. And we're also, I don't think we'll need n for this. Now I'll split this up. First, I'll get beta hat. And first, I'll actually get this top piece here. So when I say top, I mean this top component here. So top is equal to the numpy.sum. And let me try to actually uh, show both these at the same time. I'll zoom out a bit just so you can see both of these at the same time. Top is equal to np.sum of, we're going to get x minus minus x bar that we calculated there. And then we are going to multiply that by y minus y bar. Okay, so we take the sum of all the multiplications of x minus x bar uh, and y minus y bar. That's the top. We can get the bot, bottom. Uh, this, this component here, this is equal to the numpy dot sum of basically just x minus x bar and we can write it just like we do in Python is squared like that. Okay. And then just uh, beta hat is simply equal to the top divided by the bottom because we set it up that way. Now alpha hat is dependent on that beta hat. So alpha hat is equal to that y bar minus beta hat that we calculated just now times x bar. And then all we need to do is we set up models like this, where we return uh, the dictionary. Actually, let me just to be extremely explicit here, I'll say model is equal to the dictionary of alpha hat. And this component is going to be alpha hat. And you could probably guess it, beta hat is equal to is equal to beta hat. Okay, and then we just return that model. So that's what we mean by the model that best minimizes the the least the MSE the mean squared error. Um, 
it that is the ones that do it. Here's our dictionary. So we can use this very easily with, uh, we'll just say best model is equal to the get best model. That's what we called this function right here. And let me actually zoom back in. So best model is get best model. Um, and then we'll pass that the X and the Y where X is pop numpy and Y is bedrooms numpy. And we can see the best model, its components are apparently 76.84 uh, for alpha hat and 0 0.32 for beta hat. That's awesome. Okay, and now what we'll do is uh, really the same thing as above. So here we are plotting uh, our, our test model here, just the one that we were kind of playing around with. Before we were doing that, and now what we'll plot is the same thing, except we'll get the predictions from that best model model and you can see here oh man that looks a lot like the scikit learn one if we scroll up to the top past that one we can see it looks a heck of a lot like the same one that scikit learn gave and let's go ahead and confirm that very shortly where if we add um, if you remember predictions df was uh was this thing where we had the population the bedrooms and scikit learns bedroom predictions we can actually add to this thing predictions df sub we'll call it uh, our model predictions so we'll make a new column and we'll set that column equal to b well okay we'll just get it again the get model predictions of with best model and the population so that predictions df is Oh man, those columns are literally the same thing. Okay, so, but that proves it that we literally just implemented scikit-learn's implementation of uh, at least simple linear regression. And I'll just say it for now, uh, again, simple linear regression means that we're just, we're actually able to plot it like this because we're just using one input variable. We're just saying that the Y is equal to alpha hat or alpha plus uh, beta hat times X, or X is just the one input. Uh, next time with multiple linear regression, we will do, um, it's kind of more difficult to plot it like this because we're actually gonna have multiple of these input variables. We'll not just have population, but we can have other ones as well. And that often makes for a better model. Um, and it also is something that kind of builds up better to or towards how logistic regression and uh, is specifically neural networks, how they work in tier and the interior, it's more multiple linear regression rather than simple linear regression with just one variable. To finish this off, I'm just going to paste in one final thing here, which shows that the mean absolute error of our model, and I'm just getting predictions df sub the bedrooms right here, and the predictions df sub our bedroom predictions, I guess I called it differently, but that's fine. I will change that to our model predictions. We can see that mean absolute error is off by about 118. So that's a very good model. It's clearly linear. And next time, okay, make sure you subscribe so that you see, uh, see part two, which is multiple linear regression in Python from scratch. And I hope that was a great exercise in just learning Python, uh, NumPy, Pandas, and most, the probably most important uh, machine learning algorithm, although it be it simple, uh, extremely important concept of simple linear regression. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Make sure to subscribe.